Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeeds, and today we'll be talking about topic 3.6, which is age structure diagrams. So far in Unit 3, we've focused more on populations in natural ecosystems and how factors like reproductive strategies can impact their natural populations. Today, though, we're going to shift our focus to human populations, which don't exactly follow all the rules of natural populations, since humans have developed the ability to alter our own resource availability and our caring capacity. Our first topic of human population is the age structure diagram. So it's a really important diagram that tells us a lot about a human population. We typically look at age structure diagrams based for different countries, since countries are a pretty distinct way to group human populations. And here we have the age structure diagram for the United States. And the first thing to do is to make sense of the units and the layout of the diagram. So on the y-axis, we have age cohorts. So these are just groups of individuals all born within the same time period. And then on the x-axis, we have the number of individuals in each age cohort. So the width or how far out that age cohort sticks represents how large it is. So for example, if we look at the zero to four year old female age cohort in the United States, that bar projects out to just about 10 million so we have 10 million zero to four year old females in the US. We'll also talk about three different larger age cohorts that we'll be comparing today and what their sizes, which make up the shape of the diagram, will tell us about their country's growth. Today's objective is to be able to explain age structure diagrams. And the essential knowledge we need in order to do that is that the shape of an age structure diagram tells us the growth rate of the country and that the more rapidly a population is growing, the higher proportion of young people it will have compared to stable populations that aren't growing much or populations that are declining. The suggested science skill for today is data analysis, specifically explaining patterns and trends in data to draw conclusions. So now we'll talk about age cohorts. The number one mistake that APE students of the past have made when it comes to age structure diagrams is they've just memorized what the basic shapes mean uh, and they haven't been able to always explain why and how different shapes of an age diagram can tell us about their growth rate. So we need to understand age cohorts instead of just memorizing the shapes. So an age cohort is just a group of individuals all born within the same four to five year range, meaning that they're roughly in the same age group. So in demography or the study of human populations, we break populations into three large age cohorts. That's the zero to 14 age cohort, which we call pre-reproductive, the 15 to 44 year old age cohort, and that's the reproductive age, and then 45 plus, which we call post-reproductive. And we're gonna represent these in the diagram with blue, yellow, and orange. Now we'll talk about how the sizes of these cohorts tell us about the growth rate of the country. If the zero to 14 age or pre-reproductive age cohort is the largest, then we have a pyramid or a triangle shape. And this means that the population is growing. The larger that this zero to 14 age cohort is compared to the others, the more dramatic the pyramid and the higher the growth rate. This means that the reproductive age group is having lots of children, which means that the population is increasing. It also means that there will be future growth because all of these individuals in the zero to 14 range have yet to grow up and start having their own children. If the pre-reproductive age and reproductive age cohorts are roughly the same size, it indicates slight growth or stable population that's neither growing nor declining. This means that the reproductive age group is having only about the number of children needed to replace them. So the population should remain stable. If the reproductive age population is larger than the pre-reproductive age population, that means that they're having fewer children than are needed to replace them, and the population is in decline. And this is typical of highly affluent or wealthy countries like Germany and Italy. Now we'll look at shapes of age structure diagrams, which are an easy way to remember, but we have to know why the shapes mean what they do. So an extreme pyramid means that there's a far larger pre-reproductive age cohort than the reproductive age cohort. That means there's a high birth rate and very rapid population growth. If we have a less extreme pyramid, that means there's still a larger pre-reproductive age cohort, but the growth is less dramatic. So there's slight population growth, but not explosive growth 
like we see in the really wide base pyramid. A house shape or a diagram that has roughly equal distribution throughout the pre and reproductive age cohorts means that the population is relatively stable. I like to think of a house as a stable place to live. And so it's a stable population. There may be slight increase or decline, but the population is close to stable. Now, if our base is actually narrower than the middle, meaning there are fewer pre-reproductive age individuals than reproductive age individuals, that means the population is actually in decline. It's going to be shrinking. Another way to think about this is to look at how steep or how gradual the population is. If a person were to be walking up this pyramid, this is a really easy walk. And so they're going to be moving very quickly. So the population is growing very quickly. Now, if a person is moving up this pyramid, this is very steep. So they're going to move a little more slowly. And so the population growth is a little more slow. Now, a person would have a really hard time walking up this pyramid since it's not even really a pyramid. So they're going to stay relatively stable, just like the population is stable. And here, this is virtually an impossible climb. Someone couldn't really walk up this pyramid at all. And so they're not going to go up. They're going to stay down at the bottom. And this population is in decline. That's just another easy way to remember it. So now let's get a little more practice reading an age structure diagram. The first thing I want you to do here is to look at these four countries and try to rank them from highest to lowest growth rate. Remember to compare the pre-reproductive or dark green age cohort with the reproductive, the medium green cohort. Don't just look at the shape. Now I want you to try something a little bit harder and that's counting up the total number of pre-reproductive age individuals in each country. So that's the number of males and females in the zero to 14 age group. And that's a little confusing on this graph. So just make sure to look at the dark green groups for each country. Our suggested science scale for practice FRQ 3.6 today is explaining patterns and trends in data to draw conclusions. So see if you can identify the country with the slowest population growth rate and then explain your answer. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. Don't forget to like this video if it was helpful. Subscribe for future Apes video updates and check out other notes over here to the side. And as always, think like a mountain, write like a scholar.